This week, you'll learn how to make a tender fried pork cutlet with a simple summer tomato salad. But first, a word from your host. Hey guys, real quick, this week's recipe is a collaboration with Ethan over at Cooking with E. We both did our own versions of a pork chop recipe and they turned out fantastic. So watch my entire video at the end, you'll get a chance to meet Ethan. He's gonna tell you a little bit about what he did and then head over to his channel to check out his recipe. That's it guys, I hope you leave a comment on either video, let us know what you think and uh, enjoy my recipe. Okay, the first step in this recipe is to marinate our pork for 12 to 24 hours in some shiokoji. Now this is a product that's been derived from rice that's inoculated with a very healthy mold, then fermented with salt and water. It kind of looks like porridge and comes in a seven ounce container just like this. You can find it in just about any Asian market. Measure out about a quarter cup and add it to a large Ziploc bag along with your pork chops. Seal it up nice and tight and place it in the fridge to marinate. Now, as the pork rests, the enzymes in the shiokoji will tenderize the meat and they're gonna help enhance the umami flavor in the pork. So humor me for a bit and pretend it's the next day. I wanna serve these fried pork chops with a summer tomato salad. So I'm gonna cut up some of these assorted cherry tomatoes that I'll salt to extract some of the liquid, which I'll then use to make a vinaigrette for the salad. Now it's time to pull your pork chops that have been marinating so quietly overnight in your refrigerator. Now break your chops out of the bag and if you used a storage container, bravo to you. You helped save the environment. You are a much better person than I. Use a paper towel to wipe the excess shiokoji off the surface of each chop. Then grab a meat mallet or a rolling pin or some sort of small fry pan and some plastic film. Work with one chop at a time and pound it down so that it's about a quarter of an inch thick and the surface area of the pork chop has about doubled in size. It really doesn't matter if you use bone-in or boneless pork chops for this recipe. The only reason I'm using bone-in is because I like the way it looks on the plate. I don't think the bone adds any additional flavor to the dish. Once you're done pounding out each chop, place them on a sheet pan and reserve them because now it's time to set up a three-stage breading station. Grab three large mixing bowls and place them in a row on your counter. Now place your all-purpose flour in the first bowl, then whisk two eggs in the second bowl. The final bowl is for your panko breadcrumbs. Folks, this is what we call a three-stage breading station. Now some would argue this, but I do not season the flour. Instead, I season each piece of meat. I think you get a more even and consistent application this way. All right, looks like we're all set up, so now it's time to bread the cutlets. Grab a piece of pork and add it to the all-purpose flour. Turn it around a few times and make sure you have an even coating of flour all over the cutlet. Lift it up, then shake off the excess flour and add it to the egg wash. Turn the cutlet over a few times in the egg to make sure that you have an even coating. Lift the cutlet up, let all that extra egg wash drip off, then add it to your panko breadcrumbs. Again, turn the cutlet over a few times just to make sure you have an even coating of breadcrumbs, then transfer it to a sheet pan and repeat the process for pork cutlet numero dos. Now that the pork chops are breaded and the tomatoes have rested, it's time to make that vinaigrette for the salad. Transfer the tomatoes into a different bowl, then add the following ingredients to the tomato juice. Start with some Dijon mustard and then add a little bit of red wine vinegar for a punch of acidity. Then add a fat pinch of garlic powder. You could also use garlic paste here. Add a touch of honey for some balance. Then finish by whisking in some extra virgin olive oil until you have a light emulsion. All right, back to the pork. Preheat some oil in a large fry pan, preferably cast iron over medium high heat. There should be enough oil in the pan so that the bottom and the sides of the cutlet are covered, but it's not submerged. Cook the cutlets one or two at a time for about three minutes per side or until GBD. For those of you that don't know, that means golden brown and delicious. Okay, for the salad, I'm using a blend of red and green leaf lettuce. I'm gonna whisk the dressing that I made earlier and add a few tablespoons to the bowl. Then I'm gonna add all of those delicious tomatoes. 
We're gonna finish the salad off with some thinly sliced red onion, about a teaspoon of capers, maybe a tablespoon if you're feeling frisky, and some freshly ground black pepper. There's no need to add any salt because there's plenty of that in the dressing. Now take one of those beautifully fried pork cutlets and position it on a large plate along with a generous helping of salad. Feel free to add a little bit of shaved Parmesan cheese if you so desire and finish everything off with an optional grilled lemon. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Now here is Ethan to give you the lowdown on his pork chop recipe. Hey everyone on the Kitchen and Craft channel and thanks Tim for the collaboration. This video was a lot of fun to make and I think you guys will enjoy it. What I did for my dish was basically combine two dishes into one. I took a tonkatsu ramen and a pork tonkatsu and combined the two to make tonkatsu ramen pork tonkatsu. A little bit of a tongue twister, but the dish is a lot of fun to make. So head over to my channel and check it out. Tim will have the links in the description for you and I'll see you guys over there.